Hi, my name is Mr. Hebert. Welcome to my class. Today we're going to draw Miss Woodpecker, Mr. Eagle, and Miss Otter in Beaverton. The piloted woodpecker is the largest woodpecker found in North America, and they can be found in Oregon. Their bill acts as a chisel to chip wood away to make their homes in trunks of large trees. They also love to eat carpenter ants. The pilated woodpecker plays an important role within their ecosystems as a keystone species by excavating, nesting, and roosting cavities that are subsequently used by many other birds and by many small mammals. They are protected species. The bald eagle is a national symbol because of its long life, great strength, and majestic looks. Bald eagles aren't really bald. Logging and mining activities are two major factors that have wreaked havoc on their habitat. They are a protected species and can be seen out in nature and in the zoo. River otters can hold their breath for up to eight minutes while underwater. The species is protected under the Endangered Species Act and Marine Mammal Protection Act. Principal threats are habitat destructions and degradation. Water pollution that reduces fish populations impact the lives of otters. Otters are very sociable, and we all love otters. So today you will need a pencil, a ruler, an eraser, and a paper for the first part of the class. For the second part of the class, you will need a, a Sharpie, a thin one and a thick one, crayons, a paper, and an optional fork. We're gonna use the fork to scrape the wax off the paper. Now look at the top right hand corner. That's what we're gonna to draw today. So you're gonna divide the paper into four columns, once in half, and then on the left side, in half, and then on the right side, in half. Next, I'm going to label each column for what we're going to draw on them. You do not need to do this step. This is just for me and you to know what we're going to draw in each column. Next, we're going to draw what's called the horizon line. That's the ground. So it's a straight line halfway down the paper. Next, we're going to draw the tree and then the woodpecker. Line the ruler up like this and make a straight line for the tree, halfway through the first column. Now we're going to make the woodpecker. We're going to make an oval halfway through the horizon line, like this. Next, we're going to draw the woodpecker's head. The woodpecker's head just needs to be a circle on top of the oval, just like this. Next, we're gonna put the details on the woodpecker. We're going to put the feathers on the head that spike up like this. Then we're gonna put the feathers on the side. Next, we're going to put a beak on the woodpecker, just like this. Then we're going to put a little rosy cheek on the woodpecker and a little eye with eyelashes, just like this. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make the woodpecker's wing. The woodpecker's wing just needs to be a shape kind of like this with a couple of feathers. Then we're going to make the lower part of the woodpecker. The lower part involves these feathers, just like this. Then there's some feathers hanging down. This shape can be like this. And then you're just gonna draw some feathers in details three little columns of feathers, representing its tail. The next thing we will do is the woodpecker's foot or claw, and that's attached to the tree, kind of like this. Next is the chest. The chest has several feathers, and it kind of goes at an angle like this, making the feathers as you go up in the angle. Then, on the tree trunk, we're going to put a hole that the woodpecker is pecking. The whole can kind of be like this. Then a few details representing the bark on the tree. You don't need to make many, just a few. In the next column, we're going to draw a white western pine tree. These can be triangles stacked on top of one another. 
If it's too hard, just do one triangle and then a stick. We can erase the stuff that we don't need. We're also going to put decorations on the tree. Now we're going to be drawing the otter. The otter will be in the last column. The otter involves two circles, one for the body and one for the head. The body can be bigger than the head and should be bigger than the head. The body needs to be halfway through the horizon line. Then we're going to draw the details on the otter. Next we're going to draw the details on the otter. It's two U's for the hands and we're going to draw the bottom part of the otter just like this. The legs in the middle make a W just like this. On the bottom we're going to draw three small circles for the feet and then three small circles for the other feet. Then we're going to draw the tail. The tail comes out like this on one end and then just like this on the other end. It's longer on the left end. Then we'll draw the details on the head. You have a sideway cheek just like this and we'll draw the ears just like this. So you do an upside down U for each of the eyes. Then you draw three lines for the eyelashes. The next, the next part is the nose. You're gonna draw a cute little nose just like this. The mouth is like, kind of like a W on the end. It just dips further down. Then you're going to draw some little rosy cheeks. Those can just be little circles. Next on the face, we're going to draw three little whiskers on each side. Also, we're going to draw the little hands of the otter. Those can just be a couple of little lines, just like this on each paw. Next, we're going to dress up the otter in a little collar and a little tie in the middle. The collar can be this shape and then the tie can be like this. The tie can just be a small circle and then the little things hanging down below the circle with a stripe halfway through the collar, like this. Next, we're gonna draw the hat on the otter. The hat can just be a basket shape like this and then a circle on top. You can also choose to draw a stripe halfway through it. After we draw the otter, we're going to draw the lake you're going to make a little piece of grass in the middle of the lake. Just add a ripple near the grass so it looks like it's coming out of the water. Next we're going to draw the eagle. We'll put the eagle about here. The eagle can just be a small egg shape just like this with C's with a C and a backward C on both sides for the wings. Look at the top right hand corner for a clearer picture. The eagle will have some wings and it will have a back tail, kind of like the woodpecker, but shorter. We'll also add some feet, three little toes on each side. The lower part of the body is like a W, just like this. The wing can be split into three little sections, just like this to represent the feathers. Then we're gonna do the toes. The toes are just three little oval shapes. Next, we're going to do the separation of the head and the body. The beak can just be a smaller egg shape like this, that's split in half with a curved circle. Next, we'll make some little rosy cheeks. Then, we're gonna make the eyes of the eagle. For the hat of the eagle, it's a square box and a line going through it on the bottom. Then, you can decorate it using the American flag decorations. You can make stripes on it, and then on the bottom half, you can make little stars. The next thing we're gonna make is the flag that the eagle is holding. Make sure to write your name on your paper. Now, we're going to start inking our whole paper. This means that you're going to need the fat Sharpie and the skinny Sharpie. So in comic book drawing, the outline tends to be thicker and the detail tends to be thinner. Make sure to trace all of your pencil lines. Don't leave any out. Make sure to add the moon 
and the snow. The moon is just a circle that you can do freehand. Also, the snow are just tiny little versions of the moon. Tiny little circles that can vary in size. Now we're switching to the thinner marker. Do the details like the tinsel in the tree with the thinner marker and the facial expressions on the animals with the thinner marker. Also, do your signature or your name with the thinner marker. I'm gonna teach you a little bit about light and shadow. The moon is on the right hand side, so all the shadow is gonna be on the left hand side. As you can see with the tree, we have a thicker line followed by three or four little lines on the trunk of the tree. It's called hatching. You see this a lot in comic books. We're gonna do some contour hatching on the feathers of the woodpecker, just like this. Contour hatching is curved hatching. We're also going to do some contour hatching on the main body of the woodpecker, just like this. Next, we're gonna make some shadow underneath the eagle because the moon's above it. Make sure to make that shadow on the opposite end of where the moon is, underneath the eagle. Lastly, I would like you to erase all of the pencil lines. And that's how you ink. So next, I'm gonna teach you about coloring techniques using crayons. So there are different ways you can use the crayon. You can use the very tip of your crayon or the side of your crayon. One's gonna be sharper and one's gonna be kind of like a shading. Next, we're gonna do pressure. When you start off, you press hard. As you go down, you press lighter and lighter. Less pressure means less, a lighter color. The next thing we're gonna do is strokes. You can do up and down strokes. You can do horizontal strokes, which means back and forth. Or you can kind of do scribble strokes. It looks better if it's intense strokes. The next thing we're going to do is hatching. Hatching is just lines that are right next to each other in one direction. Cross hatching is lines in one direction, but then lines in the other direction, and that makes cross hatching. The next thing is scrumbling. And scrumblings are almost like little loop-de-loop -loop lines. Then textures. Textures, like in a tree, can be drawn and then lightly colored over. Then there's scraping. If you press hard with a crayon and put a lot of the crayon down on the paper, you can scrape it off with a fork, leaving a consistent stained texture. Lastly, we're going to do blending, which involves different colors. You can overlap these colors and they will blend together. Yes, crayon can blend. Now that you learned some coloring techniques using crayons, I want you to color the entire thing using crayons in any way you want. Once you finish coloring, you can scrape off the wax if you want. This is how you do it with a fork. Alternatively, you can use another relatively sharp tool. And this is the finished picture. I hope you enjoyed today's class. See you next week.